There came a point in my life when I knew I had to change it. So I took a chance and sold and gave away everything that I owned to experience a new life living out on the canals and rivers of the UK. So I'd like you to come along and experience it with me every step of the way. Morning YouTubers, nice of you to join me again. And for 20 minutes or so, I want you to imagine that you're joining me on the back of the boat. So you get to feel like you're cruising along with me. We're just leaving the mooring in New Bold on Avon and today we want to get just past Brinklow. which is a journey of about five miles northwest along the Oxford Canal. This pub gets quite busy with a lot of people eating out, so I'd imagine the food is quite nice. Never tried it myself though. Right, we've got the first obstacle of the day coming up. It's New Bold Tunnel. It's only a short one as tunnels go, but it's supposed to be a two-way tunnel. But when I've looked at it, it doesn't seem a lot of width there to get two boats past each other. So I looked up and made sure there was no boats coming towards me before I went in. I've got my fingers crossed that it stays that way. Yeah, we're all right. I've been living out here on the canals and rivers on my narrowboat for over two years now. And in all that time, I've never plugged into the electricity once. So with the energy bills, how they are nowadays, I think I've done quite well. And I've managed to generate enough of my own to get by quite comfortably. There's another one of them canal arms that go to nowhere. This is an impressive looking place. Very boaty looking. got the canal equivalent to the roadside service station here but it looks like one from the 1960s very tree lined along this part of the canal There seems to be a lot of bridges of various shapes and sizes as we're going along here. Mum's gone back. She's gone back to uh, my sister's. So I'm on my own now. Strange to be on my own. But yeah, I'll miss mum. And uh, yeah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, 
you'll have to watch the previous video and you'll get the gist in some of the places down here the trees meet each other from either side in the middle and it becomes like a bit of a canopy which is quite a nice effect Coming up here on the left is a place called Limes Farm Marina. Or at least that's what it says in my guidebook. But my guidebook's well out of date and I've been wrong before now. So if I am, leave a comment and put me straight. This looks a nice, quiet and peaceful spot to have a permanent mooring. I would imagine that a lot of these people live on these boats. And I'd say there's a lot worse places to live. I'm fascinated by these tiny narrow boats. I'd love to have a look inside just to see if you could live comfortably in there. It's good to see a bit of maintenance because some of these bridges down here that I've seen have got a bit of damage. with the age of some of them I suppose it's a never ending job along these canals how are you getting on on the back here with me I hope you're nice and relaxed and all de-stressed these canal journeys seem to have that effect on people The thing I love about this game is you never know what you're going to see around every corner or coming out of every bridge. I suppose it's different if you've been up and down these canals before, but these are all new to me so it's all a bit of a surprise, mostly a lovely surprise. Have a look at the damage on this bridge where it's been hit by narrowboats. I think you've got to be drunk or blind to go that far of course. This is the first boat that I've passed going the other way today which is very unusual on this canal at this time of the year coming up on the left hand side is the entrance to Brinklow Marina I've heard some good reports about this place. Another YouTube boater recently spent the night in there and he spoke well of it. Like I said earlier on in the video, I'm aiming to moor up just past Brinklow and I hope there's some shops there because I'm really running short of supplies
This bridge is a bit wonky looking. Could do with some maintenance. Going back to the shopping situation. That's one of the drawbacks about this lifestyle. Because most of the time you've got to rely on little corner shops and post offices to get a bit of food because you're nowhere near supermarkets. It's starting to look really beautiful around this area. Really impressive. I'm enjoying this bit. I think we're coming up to a place called Hungerfield. It seems like one of those places that not only looks nice, it feels nice as well. There's something coming up on the right that looks a bit strange and funny. There's a cow sitting there like a dog watching the boats. I almost asked it to give me its paw or should I say give me its hoof. I've never seen anything like that before. Wow, look at this place. Delightful. I know we're a bit out in the middle of nowhere and I need supplies, but if I can see a mooring, I'm going to moor up here. Can't miss out on a place like this. That's the thing about narrow boating. If you see somewhere that looks beautiful, as long as you can get a moor in, you can stop and live there for a few days. And I've just found a lovely one. I came out in the twilight to see if it was still as beautiful as it was when I first turned up. And yes, it's still beautiful. What a place. I'm on a country lane from Hungerfield and I'm trying to go to Brinklow and get some shopping and have a look around. The weather's fantastic. Anyway, yeah, concentrate. See you later. When I got to Brinklow, I was lucky enough to turn up on the day they're having their Scarecrow Festival. Where the people of the village make up scarecrows and then people come and judge them, like a competition. So I joined in with the community spirit and had a good look around. It was lovely. Very pleasant surprise. I tried not to stand still for too long because the way I'm dressed I'd have probably won the scarecrow competition. On the other side of the road there's a 13th century church and a or the remains of a Martin Bailey castle. 
The church is called St. John the Baptist. And it was built in the year 1252. It said there was an earlier wooden church on this site from Saxon times. As Brinklow derives from the Saxon name Brinker's Low, which means Brinker's Hill in Old English. The organ was donated to the church in 1873. They ran out of space for burials in the churchyard. So in 1884, Brinklow Cemetery was opened. When I was filming around the churchyard, a local lady came up to me and showed me a really interesting gravestone. And I'll show you that now. Behind the trees up there, there's a gravestone of a local man called Thomas Bolton. He was a deaf and dumb woodcutter who died in the year 1779. He must have been very well thought of by the locals at the time because they left this epitaph on his stone. It says this man his character to some from infancy was deaf and dumb. His understanding yet was clear. His heart was upright and sincere. He chiefly got his livelihood by faggoting and felling wood, till death the conqueror of all gave the fella himself a fall. I think that's fantastic, and what an interesting find, and a bit of luck with that lady showing me around the graveyard. Brinklow Castle is affectionately known to the locals as the Tump. The hill and earthworks here are one of the best preserved examples of a modern Bailey castle in the country. Just pause the video if you want to read in more detail about the castle. It wasn't a stone castle but made of wooden palisades like most of them was at the time. It would have been used in the 12th century during the reign of King Stephen and the civil wars that was going on at that time. I've climbed up onto the top of the Mutt where they would have had a tower on top of this as well and the views would have been much better and they could have seen the enemy coming from a day away. The things you find out and see if you step off the narrowboat now and again. It's fantastic, isn't it? I've got some lovely, generous people to thank for buying me a coffee. Steve, David Bircham, Andy Bisson, Scrappy, Nobby Hall, Mike Heat and Timothy. Thank you so much for being so generous. And I've got some new members to welcome. David and Fran. Thanks for joining the Buy Me A Coffee app membership to go with my other lovely members, Scrappy and Steve. Thank you very much. The Buy Me A Coffee link is in the video description. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.